quickly, ju just to welcome everybody, we have Darren Starr, Sutton Foster, Hilary Duff, Peter Herman, Debbie Mazur, Miriam Shore, Nico Tortorella, Marley Bernard, and Charles Michael Davis. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. Um, so I think we should jump right in to what we all just saw. Uh, Darren, why start here? Why start the season like this? You know, we wanted to start the season with a bang, and, a, and um, we sort of, like, you know, the, the show, we've been fortunate in that the show's been able to kind of reflect the times in terms of what's going on. Last year we dealt with the idea of truth and, and um, post-truth, and, and, you know, this year with the, I mean, with everything going on, with the whole Me Too movement, we realized, we looked back and we thought, wow, we're, we sort of like we're living that in the writer's room, having had a lot of fun with a character like Edward L. L. Moore and really played it for laughs and now realizing, wow, we wouldn't find that funny anymore. So that's sort of what, what our jumping off point was in the room. And I just felt like we wanted to sort of like shake things up and move the story. And this seemed like a way to do it in a, in a surprising way where it felt very organic to our world and our, and, and our characters. Mm -hmm. So Sutton and Peter, can you tell us what it was like when you read those scripts? What were your first reactions? <laughs> I, I thought... I read it and I thought, oh my God, first, did they send us the last script of the season first by accident? And then I just thought, how are we going to get out of this? Uh, you know, I, th I think it's so great when writers paint themselves into an impossible corner, especially uh, at any point in a, in a season and especially early on. So I picked up my jaw off the floor and went to work and it's great. It was ballsy and exciting, and it just, I felt like it, I was like, all right, here we go. Like, what, a, what an exciting way to start a season, and, and then, like, the, the whole season's such a roller coaster, so. So now that we've kind of started here, Darren, what, what kind of topics, what are we going to explore with season five, now that this is our starting off point? What are we going to see that we haven't yet seen on the show? Well, I think the show, it's always, it's always been a, about getting, um, you know, first of all, how a small lie can just sort of kind of grow and grow and grow and the ramifications it can have in people's lives. And then this season, I think we always thought about just sort of like, let's just get more real with the characters because I also think, look, the audience and we, the writers, have been thinking about all of our relationships. So the, the, you know, the, the Liza-Josh relationship really benefits so much from Liza finally being real with Josh and understanding how, and that, that relationship became real. And if we wanted the Liza and Charles relationship to be real, it, it had, the, the truth has to come out because otherwise it's just really just based on a fantasy. And so in order to really explore that relationship in, in a truthful way, we had to kind of like expose Liza and see where not just how that affects a relationship, but how that affects a lot of um, work issues down the line. Um, Hillary and Charles, you guys have such incredible chemistry here. Like, you guys are setting the scenes together on fire, I think. Um, can you talk a bit about um, kind of your scene prep? You know, how are you guys different when they're... How are your characters different when they're at the office or then a scene where they're outside of the office, like in the Times Square scene? What kind of choices are you making about the way they interact? We're allowed to make out outside of the office <laughs> scenes. <laughs> And hey, I think we make also out be half office. naked, huh? I think we make out in the office. We do. <laughs> That's right. Spoiler we made alert. out everywhere on that stage, <laughs> and around New York. I think that um, you know they, they do have this. They can't help themselves around each other, and it's that competitive. That's why we're so far apart right now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, we might just start making out. <laughs> Thank God they separated us. Um, <laughs> Climbing over. <laughs> I, mean. um, I think that I think that Kelsey's so protective of her her job. Like she works so hard for um, Charles to take her seriously, and that's why Liza's lie is so devastating. You know, not the age, but that she could like destroy everything that Kelsey's worked to build. And I think the same goes for like her and Charles' relationship. So it's just kind of a big cover up, and he really likes to dangle like exposing them in like in front of important people in the office I feel like because he thinks it's a fun game and she's just like Ugh. I love it um, so this episode sadly has no Josh um, so Nico when we meet Josh this season yes! when we when we get to see Josh how how is he what kind of state is he in where do, where do we find him
<laughs> well, Josh is, he's just like, in terms of love and relationships, he's just kind of been a mess for four seasons, right? Yup. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and now he's married to this girl uh, that he's only known for a couple months, right? And he comes back to this whole fam and he's kind of still a mess. <laughs> Um, a beautiful mess. Yeah. A hot mess. <laughs> um, but you know. Surprises. 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 There are lots of surprises. Yeah. He's a little bit of a sad sack in the beginning of the season. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, yes, except he, ba- I mean, you know, Josh. Uh, the comeback kid. He bounces back. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He's resilient. Yes. I mean, look at him. Yeah. <laughs> One more time. And by the way, oh I love you. I can all. say that there's a scene. There's a scene in the. What was that? No, there's like a scene the in the. In, section in the uh, security, <laughs> security, Someone please. Down. It's nice that you're all Someone seated down. together, though. You can I was going to say, there's a scene in the second episode where. Nico, you made me cry watching the uh, scene. I mean it. So well, honestly, there's, there's a lot of deep. Josh, ha, Josh, emotions run so deep, deep. and mm. I mean, Nico brings you bring so much sensitivity to that guy. I'm gonna start crying right now. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I said I'm gonna start crying right now. <laughs> uh, so we got a, um, a question from one of our Twitter followers about um, Josh and his emotional state from um, Ashley Owen. She says. Does Josh have anyone else in his life besides Liza or Maggie to help him with his many, many woes? Wait, does Josh have any friends anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, Lauren. Lauren, yes, Lauren, Lauren for sure. Uh, uh, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Should be his wife. <laughs> Lauren? Oh, yeah. Should be his w- wife? He's married. Oh, my oh, wife. <laughs> I'm saying, but when he has to complain about his wife, he has Lauren yes. to talk oh, to. Oh, 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 yes. Yeah. Well, I'm the roommate, too. Yeah, yeah, Kelsey. I live there, too. (laughs) They all live together, guys. They're all together. Yeah, he's not, like, a solitary guy. And Josh and Maggie are, like, really close this year. Yeah. Yeah. It's been so nice. (laughs) Can I... Does Josh have one guy friend, though? I show up for you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Big time. The guy friend, Liza chased the guy friends away. Uh, they all, remember, you, you had a few. And then yeah. Liza's just, like my new guy no, friend. I got chased I, out. I love that you about know, Josh, that he has a lot of female friends. Oh, I, I mean, that's like my life, him. yeah. One it's going to come full say, circle to me. We're going to be like, it's going to be a buddy picture. <laughs> yes! One thing I, I want to say about this season that's really exciting is that a lot of the um, relationships that haven't been explored yet between cast members do. Like, um, Lauren and Diana Trout have a really cool storyline this this yeah. um, season, and um, Debbie and Nico have a really yeah. nice friendship that they begin. So it's cool that everyone's like like cross. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Cross pollinating. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that sounded too. Um, no, it doesn't okay, actually. It <laughs> right on the nose. <laughs> and um, and Debbie and. Um, and Miriam, Miriam. and Miriam. So many yeah, of us. Thinking, yeah, like, it's me. Yeah. My name. We yeah. finally meet. We do meet. We yeah. met last season, but it ended up in the cutting room floor. Is I know. We got to even make out. If you could see the movie from the cutting room floor of last season, it would be real <laughs> exciting between me and Debbie. What was this? What was the scene that got cut? It was a party that uh, Diana hosted at her house that um, that Debbie helped her out with, and and it kind of. I don't know. We had we just had better ways to service those characters this season, so we we rethunk it. Did you say service those characters? <laughs> so we can't, take, we can't get away from it. Always dirty. No, yes, it's always, always dirty. Yeah. Um, so I have a um, a question for you, Miriam, about Diana. One of I think the best moments from last season was that moment where Diana goes through her breakup and she has that kind of moment of silence where she mm. ties on her necklace. The tiny petite. I mean, did you notice the necklace? It's hard to I see. I didn't see it. It was hard to see. Tiny yeah. flower. Yeah. Um, I was hoping, can you walk us through that scene? What is Diana feeling? I love that scene. I, I, what I loved about it was that it, you know, it, was, it, it cost her to break up with this person, but this person wasn't right for her. And so instead of it being sort of a sad scene, like of a woman of a certain age not being with someone, it was about, it was very empowering. And it was saying like, you know, I, I'm in control of my life, and 
I don't need to be with someone who's not worthy of me. And I, was, I applauded that. I thought that was fantastic. But then it has an emotional cost, and then she puts on her armor in the guise of a giant flower, <laughs> which was my suggestion to the wardrobe. And God bless them. They were like, I was like, wouldn't I just put on like the biggest flower you've ever seen? They're like, we'll make it. <laughs> and they did. And they made it. And I saw it, and I was like, good God, we're starting something. I thought I would see like just people walking around the street with giant flowers. I don't know. Maybe, maybe next season. There you go. Yeah. I'm interested, like, uh, what does the script say in a moment like that? You mean like the stage directions in yeah. that moment? Yeah, like what were the conversations you were having with the director and the costume designer about making sure that that... I did, it's I, a silence. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so I did powerful. have a conversation with, for instance, Wardrobe, saying like, uh, it, the, I wanted this moment to be very personal and, and, and to sort of show her pain, and then I wanted to have that moment. So I really did ask for something huge just so she could feel powerful. You know, I wanted that to be a scene about her be feeling empowered mm -hmm. and, and, and all the mixed emotions of when you, you lose someone that you love, but you know it's the right thing. And uh, I thought it was beautifully written. And I had a couple conversations about it and how I felt. I just feel like you, the writers are so open to, to understanding what the human experience is, not just to like have a laugh or forward a plot, you know? She also got to direct this year. Yes, Miriam. Yes. Yes. Miriam was amazing. Yeah. I, I was lucky enough. It, and it made me fall in love with the show and with the, the people in the show even more. It was such a fantastic and experience. And us, you, too, though. Oh, stop. She was so that. fantastic. Yeah. It was so special to have her directing. It was great. And also, I, there was I a special it. episode because Ashley Skidmore wrote it. So we had a female writer, female director, female first AD, female script supervisor. It was just all these women sitting yeah. at the, like, the big boy chairs. And a, and a gender fluid on, character. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was exciting. So on a day like that, how does it feel different than other days? What does that kind of energy bring to the set? Why is this day different from all other days? Um, <laughs> thank you, Juice. Uh, <laughs> we had the gender fluidity. Yeah, we also had a gender fluid character uh -huh. and, and actor, and that was fantastic. Oh, it was just, uh, you know, it, 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 I learned so much. And, I, and what was great, I'll tell you the difference in the energy on set, was that every single person there was like ready to give their all and just I felt so supported by everyone so it was like everyone was excited to be there kind of added this energy I felt like when we were like all right it felt like you guys were there to support me and there to tell the story and we were really like a team it was great mm -hmm. yeah, I just wanted to say that in, in answer to your question what did the script say I think it was Diana collects herself and and remark and, and but that? we all know but we all know Miriam so well that when we read it, we we already somehow know how full it will be. But I think that that's what, but that's what, but that's what she made that, that's what she made that moment out of was Diana collects herself. <laughs> Beautifully written. That's so nice. If anyone's ever having a moment of low self confidence, yes. just reach out to Peter Herman. <laughs> wait, wait, what? And um, you'll feel better. Having a moment of low confidence, reach out to you. I'm, I'm so old and deaf, I still didn't hear much. It was good things, good things, and all they're good things. Loudspeakers. God, that's so scary. <laughs> um, Miriam, we have a running joke in the uh, Vulture office that one of the best characters on the show is Diana's necklaces. Um, do you have a favorite and have you taken any of them? Well, one was the flower because it was a suggestion of mine and I thought it was perfect. I thought it, I thought it actually became a part of the story which is sort of amazing. I'm, I don't, um, in my real life, um, this isn't real, guys. <laughs> it's an illusion. Uh, I don't even wear a wedding ring because I just, I'd lose it. I'd lose a symbol of my unity. It'd be tough. Um, so, I don't <laughs> so, so, so it's a part of um, the armor my character puts on, but, but we all know from, from playing people who are not ourselves that everything about creating a character helps you get to who that character is, and clothes are a big part of that for any character, and certainly for Diana Trout. So those necklaces are like a, like truly her, her armor and her expression of what she wants to show the world, which is like, don't fuck with me. We get so excited when she yeah. comes to set. We can't wait <laughs> to see. Son will always be like, available for purchase. I'm like, yeah. someone buys that and that's, wears it. That's the big joke, we're like, available for, for purchase. purchase. Yeah. <laughs> 
Wow. He, but so I don't know why we're just focusing on the um, the necklaces because it's also the earring with the and ring. The, like, it's a lot. And the whole <laughs> thing is she, like last night she was doing a scene. She's like, I'm in so much pain. I'm in so much pain. I'm just breathing through the pain. I I'm like, what is guys. happening? She's Scoliosis. being like, attacked. <laughs> you, you were being attacked. I have bled from my jewelry. No. <laughs> it's true. It, that's, a, that's a truism. But I do it for Where? you guys. You don't want to know. <laughs> Every, everywhere. everywhere. My I'm soul really and my body has bled. But I mean, it's a, for all of us, though. I feel like the, 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 they do such an amazing job of figuring out who these people are, and it feels very collaborative with every, uh, you know, every, every character. Um, kind of on the same theme as props, Debbie, I heard that a rumor that there was a scene last season uh, when you slash up the artwork yep. that there was a personal item of yours in that scene. Is that Tell us true? about it. Can you tell yes. us about that? <laughs> that was my switchblade. <laughs> <laughs> I used to carry one around back in the day when um, this neighborhood, I used to live above Manganero's, which was 38th and 9th Avenue, which is all prostitutes. And it was a very different area. So, you know, just in case I needed it. But, um, and then I have an affinity for knives. I like, I just, they're beautiful. So I, I collect them just to have at the house. But uh, I, I have some, some skills. <laughs> but so, I'm not a violent person. You were pretty comfortable. Yeah. With it, yes. Well, I also do farming with my knives. I, I, I cut my arugula down. I have different knives for different things. I have lover's knives where they, they're like two-edged swords. If, in Sicily, in the turn of the century, when they're being forced to marry, where you could just like die together, but I'm not gonna use them. <laughs> I'm wondering what is the genesis of that? Like Darren, did you hear that she had a switchblade and you suggested that she used it? Or Debbie, you said, oh, I'll bring my own switchblade. Like what? <laughs> yeah, I think cool. we assumed Maggie would have one and it wasn't a big stretch to think that Debbie might have one too, so. <laughs> I'm wondering, you know, how much are you, when you're writing, how much are you playing to like the personal strengths of the actors? You know that they have a characteristic personally, that you want to bring to the role? I mean, I, I feel like that at some point when actors play roles for so long, you, there's always a piece of them in the role. So I think there's a piece of all of these guys in the roles they play, and we sort of pick up on that and, and write towards that. And certainly, um, knowing Debbie in, you know, makes Maggie richer, as knowing all these guys make their characters richer. I think one topic the show really um, handles with a lot of nuance is kind of the complexities of female friendships, like the highs and the lows. There, Hillary and Sutton, there was a great scene last year when um, Liza gets the phone call from her daughter when she's in the woods and Kelsey understands. I thought it was so beautifully done by the two of you. Can you talk to us about that scene and kind of how you were getting into the, the emotions there? Well, that was out. Oh. Nice, nice soundtrack. <laughs> I feel like we have to wait for sound. This is, on, this yeah. is what happens when we're filming here, too. Yeah, we're like, oh, well, uh, sirens. Um, but it was, you know, once the, because Kelsey felt so betrayed by hearing about Liza's lie, and it was like, how are they going to mend this friendship? And that was, that was finally, Kelsey was able to realize, oh, wow, Liza's doing all of this for her daughter and, like, the love she has for her daughter. And it was, it was an awesome, awesome moment to yeah. be able to have. I think I think that um, also it was it it really sucked for us. We've been doing the show together for four years, and we have our own partnership. You know, like for the long hours that we work, or for you know respecting one another, like on set and what we need sometimes. Like we have our own relationship. So, ha like I, Kelsey was so cruel to Liza, and some of that felt really real, and it and it was like emotional for us. And we would laugh, but be like, she would look at me after the scene was over, and she'd be like. Ugh. You know, and like, like you're so evil, like, you know, and so it was almost like we were getting to get rid of that and, and, and like move forward. So it, like the really kind of emotional stuff where I got to see her on the phone with her daughter. Um, we were also like relieved that we were done having to be mean to each other in real life. <laughs> we were so, all relieved. Nice. When, yeah. when so relieved. Yeah. When Kelsey forgave Liza, the, the, like, <laughs> we were all like, oh, thank God that's over. <laughs> it was stressful. It was hard to watch. It was hard to shoot those scenes. I mean. Yeah. Sucked. Yeah. Um, I think part of that too, this female friendship topic is uh, the idea of like mentorship. I think it's a big part of the show that you need people to help you in your career and open doors for you. And I'm hoping you guys can maybe all talk about this, but like Miriam, did you have a Diana? Was there someone in your career in the industry who was kind of guiding you? 
And well, um, yeah, I think the great thing about being an actor is that you, you can move from project to project, and you do, you find those people on certain projects who, who um, have been doing this longer than you, and, uh, and just help give you guidance, or give you, you know, hope, or help you out when you're struggling, and it's an interesting moment in your life, um, which you guys don't know yet, when you are the older one, and then suddenly you feel that turn. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think in any, in any career, having someone who helps you through that is paramount in, in, in helping you get along. And I feel like acting, we're lucky because we do have so many different projects, we get to have lots of different people who fill that role. And I'll also say that, that on, on that score, um, you know, it can be very small, it can be very small things. Like somebody, if somebody who's further down the road and looks at you and just says, keep going. Something as simple as that. And I want to say to all of you, never underestimate the importance of doing that for other people and the small things that you say, um, the role that that can play in their lives. It's, it can be gold to somebody. So beautiful. <laughs> Always bringing the sentiment. He always says the right thing. <laughs> is, is Peter the Diana of the cast? <laughs> yeah. right um, I, I can, I'll, I'll, I'll um, tell the I'm story. I'm going to go ahead and answer this question in uh, like seven ways. Um, <laughs> but it'll be quick. Every person here I have learned so this is my first big job um, out of grad school, and Darren and was... And you're killing it and knocking it out of the park. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> but um, Darren very kindly gave me this job. Um, and... I wasn't being kind. <laughs> I was just being smart. <laughs> yes, yes. But also what he did that was very smart is he, over the past four years, has really given me a, a tremendous amount of confidence, mm -hmm. and every person here has mentored me because they all, you know, have had careers and know what they're doing and I really showed up on this set so nervous and you know this like raw talented little like nervous person and everyone took me under their wing and had my back and gave me such profound advice and uh, guidance and love and care and um, I I don't know to, to uh, the, Peter is right in that you know I wrote Sutton Foster fan mail when I was 14 and she wrote me back <laughs> She, when, every time, I always have to tell, the, I always, because it's so, it's so novel, it's so great, but Sutton will laugh in a take that, that, that of mine, she'll laugh at something I do, and like, that's the nicest thing in the world. <laughs> it's not nice, it's just, you're just really good, dude. <laughs> that's yeah. funny. It's that. Uh, it's also that. Thank you, okay, so I'm done. Bye. What, what was the fan mail? What was the fan mail? Oh, I just wrote her like, you're my hero and you're everything and you're perfect and you were amazing and thoroughly modern Millie and you deserve the Tony and I want to be like you one day. And she wrote back a headshot and on the, on the headshot, on the headshot it said, follow your dreams, Molly, XOXOS Foster. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> That's so nice. That at least it wasn't a stamp. Right? Yeah. Hand. Yeah. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so crazy. I think yeah. you guys will know what you're getting for your birthdays from Sutton now. Well. <laughs> Follow your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but really, that fucking made such a huge difference. You told me to follow my dreams and like, hello. That, that's what Peter's saying. That's me. Yeah, okay. Bye. <laughs> dreams followed. <laughs> Um, so Molly, another thing I love about the show and how Lauren's character is written is how sex positive she is. She just like loves to hook up and like that, and it's part of who she is and like no qualms. What do you think, how do you think Younger is unique in showing that kind of character? Like what do you think makes that character special and the show special for having her? I honestly think what's profound about Lauren is that she's not struggling with her sexuality and I think that representation is really unique. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. She doesn't ask anyone advice for who she's putting what, where, when. Like things, she's she lo and she loves herself unconditionally, and that is a part of I think queer representation that that doesn't exist in many other shows. And also, yeah, also that she's like not a token. Gay
gay friend. She's, she's a token everything, and she's not even a token. She's just like everything, which is, I think, inherently positive that there's a young woman who's just like, I fucking love myself, and this is it. Yeah, I think she loves herself, too. Like, she's so... I, I, you said that in the beginning, but she just so appreciates and loves herself, which is something we all struggle with. Yes. Um, and she is a quirky little bird, and... So unapologetic for it, yeah. you know? I mean, so, you know, Nico, I know this is a big, um, t- you know, theme for you too, but what do you guys think that other shows could be doing better? Like, when you see some shows and you're like, oh, that feels kind of like a trope, or like, oh, that leans too hard on something I've seen before, what do you think other shows could maybe, like, learn from a character like Lauren and, like, Younger's portrayal of her? I think the positive bisexual representation, you know? Um, I mean, the fact that she's not like, oh, I need to be this way, oh, I need to be this way, or... Um, but also, like, male visibility, male bisexual visibility. Um. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? I, I, I actually, what, what I love, and, 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 you know, drawing on the idea of positivity is I, I love, I think TV is, the more and more I'm finding shows that I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe they did that. I love that. I love that, as opposed to what I used to feel watching TV, which is like, why, why? Why? We've seen it before. Now I feel like, oh, I've never seen that before. Oh my God, what's happening? I'm getting really excited watching TV right now. It's a really, really exciting time. But one thing I have noticed, because I watched all of our shows when I was preparing to direct, so I know it really, really well, <laughs> um, was, and I loved it. It's so bingeable. I couldn't, I would forget that I was watching it for, you know, a specific shot and then just start watching it and be like, oh my God, what's Liza going to say? <laughs> this show um uh is um there is an overwhelming optimism and positivity and lack of cynicism which is not a lack of intelligence it it is um just a a belief in 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 the connection between humans that our show has and it's when you watch it it you feel like you're putting something down that you've been like holding that's really heavy for a while and you can just sheer entertainment set it down yeah but there's also like a positivity and a, a kind of love that goes through it that 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 feels hopeful. That it, and I love what's going on in TV, but a lot of it is dark right now. You and guys. I love it, because I have a dark, dark soul. <laughs> but, um, but, but it's, uh, watching this show is, uh, has that, that level of positivity. That is, it's that like I would a like fresh to breath. Elsewhere. You know, like it leaves you kind of like rejuvenated and empowered, and um, there's like always some sort of resolve, but it's like in a very human way, which I love about our show. Okay, I have to say something. We're having this conversation, and Nico just turned to me, and he said, <laughs> "He said, he said, what show are we talking about?" <laughs> I said, "This, our show that we're on." I was like, "That show sounds so good. That show sounds great. I should watch that show." <laughs> Uh, it's a show called Younger. You gotta watch it. Nico, you're at Vulture Fest. Vulture Fest. <laughs> May 2018. Yeah. Um, the so question... Th- wait, hold on. I need to go back for a second. <laughs> the question that was asked was, like, what needs to be seen more of on television? And I thought that you started explaining, like, this show that you were so in love with that's, like, has all of this representation. I'm like, what show is it? <laughs> That's Molly. I'm done. <laughs> Um, so, Darren, something that I love about the show is still how sexy it really feels. I'm wondering, what kind of guidelines do you get from TV Land? Like, were there things that you were surprised you could run? Like, are there, were there moments where you were like, I can't believe we got that through? Like, I'm so We happy only get, like, one shit an episode. Like, oh, oh, that sounded horrible. Like, you get to say <laughs> shit just one <laughs> time. <laughs> one poop. <laughs> TV Land like, has a really short leash on know. us. There's a comment on how much fiber we intake. Okay. I'm gonna go. <laughs> Rena saying Darren, bring it fun. I think I'm gonna go. <laughs> I don't have a poop joke. She's like, hmm, nice. Yeah, I mean, we do. I, I am a little. I was a little surprised at the beginning, but I feel that um, cable TV is even broadcast cable has changed. They've got, I mean, television has to be relevant and keep up. So I think the audience, the, the fact that you can have this sort of these sort of um, separation between, such separation between ad supported cable and pay cable because the audience just sort of smells it, you know, and 
So I was happy because I we do the show, produce the show, write the show. We want to write and send it to them, and then they would tell us you can't do this, you can't do that. And really, we'd never, we haven't gotten hardly any pushback at all. And I think that it's the kind of show that also we don't. It, it's the show isn't defining it. The show doesn't define edginess, but it has to define the reality in the world of the characters. We're able to we're able to live within in that world without feeling like we're pulling our punches, mm-hmm. and that's great because I don't feel like we we do, mm-hmm. and that and and they go with us, mm-hmm. and hopefully the show is also part of the you know the broadening of what's permissible on broadcast cable because I feel like we have gotten away with a lot of things that are feel more pay cableish to me, and I don't think this show would be done any differently if it was on a pay cable network. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm wondering what, as a writer, you have found, you know, compared to other shows you've worked on, what kind of topics and themes can you explore in the world of Younger that you maybe were dying to do or weren't able to do in um, other shows you worked on? Like, what does this world allow you? You know, I don't think it's that thinking about what, what, what are, am I able to, what are the writers I work with able to do on this show that we couldn't do on other shows, but I do feel like it's that the, the show presents themes that are, feel really relevant to me about, you know, Ages have been getting older, and suddenly, you know, I was the youngest person in the room when I started in television, and now I'm like more of the older person in the room. And looking at there's another generation of younger people behind me, and so it's able I'm able to think about things that are meaningful to me, and also it 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 puts me in a world of like understanding millennial culture in a way that I would never have like explored or gotten quite as in touch with as I have been doing this show, and also the experience of working in a room with writers, intergenerational room. So we get to sort of like, in a way, live the themes of the show as writers ourselves, and we learn from each other. So I think the, the experience has been really, as a writer, it's been, uh, it's been really unique. I'm glad you bring up, oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say, you know, I think that in, in the way that you present that, the direction of it is, I, I sort of want to adjust, because you, saw, you say, the show gives me, right, but you made it, meaning that, it's like you have you have this weird, uncanny, vaguely spooky like finger on the cultural pulse that 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 knows the moment to make this. It's not like the show pre-exists you and 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 you then say, ah, this show gives me all these opportunities to do these things. So right. I, th- I just think it's important to say is right. that he, he he's dialed in um, in, a, in a really rem- in a really re- um, unbelievable way and has been for a long time. Yeah, so. you and Track I think record. as a writer you write the things that are meaningful to you. And so this was this was this felt like a a resonant world to explore for me. And then you just hope, okay, let's hope it connects with other people. I can talk about the other shows I've done that have missed the moment too, but uh, <laughs> this wasn't one of them. Thank goodness and. Um, you know, I, I think that's, you know, you got to get, when that happens, it's, it's, it's great because you feel like you connect with the audience and you're telling stories that feel relevant. And then the, the great thing about television, about doing a TV series, is that you are always able to reflect what's going on in the world now. And I think that's the very interesting thing about television. It's, it, it's really um, culturally relevant because it happens quickly. So from the time we write something to the time it airs, there's not like a large gap in time. So we can really think about our characters are living in the world that the audience is living in as well. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you bring up millennial culture because I find the trends that you make fun of so spot on. The l- last season when they go to that um, like fake women's club. <laughs> so are you, I'm wondering like, are you pulling the millennial like cast and writers? Like where are the ideas for like, what stupid thing are millennials doing should we make fun of? And where does that come from? Hey. <laughs> well, we just, we just. <laughs> no, I'm, I mean, I'm one of, so I'm in the group too, but that episode about the fake women's club was so funny. We just observe our stupid millennials in the writer's room and see what they're doing. And yes, it's not all stupid. Not There's things fake, that I'm like, oh, why didn't, why didn't we think of that? Is that a fake women's club? I mean, it's, it's a, there's that, there is that club right, out right, there. Yes. Yeah. So yes, of course we hear about it and read about it and think, that's just hilarious. So, <laughs> you know, that, that exists. It's not hilarious. It's wonderful for, for all those members to go to it, but... Um, <laughs> No men allowed, you know, no men. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a problem. Yeah. Not really. It's yeah. okay. We'll move on from that. <laughs> um, but in our, in our younger world, we, uh, you know, just the idea of these exclusive clubs. And, and, but then it also, story-wise, kind of got beyond that, the idea that Lauren got fired from her job and wanted to make connections there and just didn't want to leave. Mm-hmm. And, and so that it became like a little bit more than a joke. It became about her basically trying to um, 
that she was humiliated and felt that her worth was so defined by having that next job that she was ready to like basically like live there as like a stowaway or whatever <laughs> and, and, and for standing, days until she made a connection. Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping standing straight up like a horse. Yes, right. <laughs> that was Lauren's big moment. Um, so uh, before I was uh, doing my uh, prep for this panel, I also put out some questions to Vulture's Twitter followers for some questions for you guys. Um, I'll <laughs> quite the spectrum of uh, questions, but I think I've got some great ones that the, the crowd wants to know. So um, this is from Lauren Reddy. She wants to know, are there any book publishing alums on the writing staff? They get so many of the book biz details right. We do um, that so much. Yeah, it's so nice. By the way, there's book publishing alums in the cast now. Dun, dun, dun. Bam. That's right. Bam. Bam. <laughs> and, and, and two. Yeah. Two. And, and Deb. I mean, I wrote Deb has two. And Deb. You wrote some books? Yeah, three. I did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> because what doesn't Hillary Duff do? I mean, <laughs> 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 Um, they're on, the, on the writing staff, no, but you know, we're all readers. Most writers are readers, so we love books. I love, I love books. I've always been I love a, lamp. a big reader. And, <laughs> and um, so I think we just kind of guess right a mm -hmm. lot. We have a, we have a consultant that we sort of run our scripts through to basically to say how far off base are we. And so, but it's more, it's not about getting ideas. It's more about just making sure we're sort of, you know, it sounds, the jargon sounds right. Mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, the world of books is something that we love. I mean, I think the writers on the show all love, and I think the act, and, and as we have many published authors on our cast, so it's like, you know, we have a, a, you know, a cast that loves books as well, and I think that books are just sort of like, still, it's like, I always think of the book business as reflecting like, it's like the older, it's like the, the world that feels like it's older and becoming obsolete, being usurped by the millennial mm -hmm. digital world, and so it reflects sort of what's going on with the show, and yet it's still um, such a, a valuable world to um, preserve. And so I think that's what the show deals with that. I think it's such a relevant industry to think about, setting the, a relevant world to set the, the world of the show in, because it just is kind of like what the show's about. As actors, what do you guys find that um, the book publishing world, why is it so ripe for drama and comedy? Like what about it? Uh, what about that work kind of workplace sitcom situation makes it um, really great for these kind of stories? Well, I mean, it's a world where people operate in the selling of stories, which is the world we operate in, too. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, that's, we, I, I, you know, I, I feel like I can get behind it. And we're, I think we're a lot of us are just book nerds, too. So to be able to talk about something that we really love in, in, at work is kind of amazing. I think also that it's like a little bit of a struggling uh, you know, like the book industry is really struggling right now so there's only so many great books to go after so the competition that we feel within empirical and millennial towards other publishers you know it's like kind of heightens the drama of like going after those good authors that are going to produce the stuff that's going to sell or that we feel passionate about kind of I mean not to mention the drama that we all have with each other but it's really about the characters but the publishing is a, such an important uh, storyline that they they make you know a priority and I think the competitiveness of that industry that's kind of dying is uh, you know our f like makes it interesting and these characters who care so much about this industry and care so much about books and reading and so they're like fighting for something they really are passionate about and I think that the uh, conflict helps any story and I think it's it's interesting that you set the sort of uh, the speed of human emotion and interaction and romance and conflict and all of that against this glacially slow industry. <laughs> I mean, it is like publishing is so slow. Um, and that's an in, in, uh, immediately an interesting uh, juxtaposition. Um, and, uh, and I actually, I, I did a number, I, was, uh, I did a whole bunch of internships at publishing companies. So I was actually thinking at one point of, go, of going into publishing. I and was I worked too. at Vanity Fair as a fact checker. So this, is, this all felt wonderfully close to home. Something, something that we say in the season now with the directors that we've like come up with as a cast, it may not be funny to anyone else, but since some of it is kind of glacierly slow talking about like books and stuff, the directors will come in and be like, we're in Manhattan, this is where it happens, guys. <laughs> and we're in Manhattan and we're happy and it's quick and we're moving. <laughs> like trying to get us to like speed along and they're like, and your show is 22 minutes, so uh, talk fast. <laughs> Um, uh, Peter, I think this is a question for you. Uh, Danielle asks, when will we get a guest appearance from Mershka Haggerty? I'm working on it. Um, 
so uh, there's she's she. she th- there's th- there's there's a she has to have a day off, and b there's not a there's not a day that she doesn't ask me when do I get to come on the show. So it's all, it's all, in, it's all, it's all in negotiations. Um, have her call me, okay? Yeah, amen. All right. All right. Can I Always waiting for the police to show me? up. Can I be me? Can I be in a scene with her? <laughs> I love her. Um, so this, um, going off of that, Maddie asks, would Sutton ever do another episode of SVU? Oh. Sure. <laughs> so we'll talk. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll do a so swap. We'll Crossover. Yeah. Crossover. <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, uh, our follower, Anne, this I guess is a question for Debbie. Um, what does your friend Madonna think about the show? Uh, <laughs> She's not busy doing anything else. She's right? never heard of it. <laughs> she, she never told me. She's just really happy that I'm working. I'm not... <laughs> she's always supportive. As long as I'm working, she knows I'm happy. Um, so if we want to give her a cameo, maybe she'd consider it. Come on. <laughs> yeah. You never know. I'll pass out. <laughs> Josh's new love interest. <laughs> Love that. Well, I actually got to make out with her once for um, a photo shoot, so maybe she could be my love interest. Oh. More fun. We feel comfortable. I like um, both. I, what meeting. about both of you guys? Yes, yes. There we go. Just uh, me, too. Me, too. That's what brings us. Yeah, me, too. Hey, okay, I'll be um, there, too. Yeah, okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, definitely. Um... Uh, a, question, a question from another Lauren. Um, with all that talent in the cast, will we ever get a musical episode? Uh, Maybe an empirical karaoke night? <laughs> I think there may, there may be a little bit of uh, uh, musicality this season. Um, <laughs> couple instances. Because that was followed up by an all caps question from Oral saying, will we ever get to hear Liza sing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But Liza does not sing well. <laughs> I don't think Liza has a hidden singing talent. <laughs> Liza's a dorky person. <laughs> uh, so, but I, we do get to hear her sing a little bit this year. We do. I think when the show wraps, Younger on Broadway <laughs> with all of us. What do you think that would look like? Like, what's like the first act action? Like, where does the first act end? Is there like a big, a big number about a book at like at the end of the first act? So, like, what do you think that would look like? SpongeBob could do it. <laughs> hey, SpongeBob does it well. <laughs> um, Edward L. Moore would have to like come down like with that crane thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, get Josh Charles to be in it. Yeah. The actor to just be. Yes. <laughs> yeah. To really confuse people. Yeah. 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 Easter egg. Um, Jillian wants to know what do you guys find are some of the perks but some of the challenges of filming on location in New York? Oh, wonderful. The horns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The honking horns. Some of the perks is that you get to see parts of New York that I've never seen before. And like some of the locations are awesome. You're like, whoa, yeah. what is this place? Like th- that's really, really cool. But we Some, get yelled at a lot. We get Sutton yelled at. I get yelled at a lot. People love to yell at Hillary. People love to no, yell no, at no. Hillary. No, no, no. I mean, like, I mean, like doormen and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, the doormen don't yeah. like us. No, no. <laughs> but I, I think it's the, some of the, the, the harder parts of filming is that it's when it's like 20 degrees outside and you're in, in a fashion coat. And you're in a fashion coat. <laughs> So um, that's really hard. Yeah. These guys uh, really, you do an amazing job of acting warm, by the way. <laughs> Amazed. I have to say that acting, like doing a show, filming a show in New York is my dream come true. Yeah. Yeah. 100% my dream come true. So Darren, you made my dream come true. Mine too. <laughs> um, and then also having shot as a director in New York City, um, it's no small task. It's, it's intense, but I feel like that gives the scenes an energy that they could not have anywhere else. They just can't. And we have an amazing crew that makes it possible Incredible. to do it all, really. I mean, it's just like kind of moving this, it's this military operation that moves around the city every day. And we've had the same crew almost for the, oh, all five right. seasons, so it's like a, it's a safe place for all of us, you know, and it's a really kind place to go to work every day. And I think that when, when a show gets the city right, the city becomes a character in the show. It's not just a backdrop, so New York is just yeah. deeply alive, yeah, for sure. uh, which I think is just so beautiful. Well, I wonder, like, can you guys even walk by the Bank of America building anymore? Like, I, it's so perfect, the continuity of that, you're always there. And, it's, you know, I think other shows shoot in front of other buildings and this buildings, but you guys have really owned that, like, corner of, like, 42nd and 6th belongs to you guys now. Yeah. I always look for craft services. I'm like, where, where's, 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 the, where's the food? Where's the food? It's never there. It's never there. 
Um, Alex wants to know, Sutton, what was it like shooting Thad's death scene? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, it was so long ago. It was so long ago. All I, all I remember is that I had to react to, because um, it all was done with special effects, and I had to react to his death while this giant, like, wind thing poofed at me. <laughs> and so I had to, like, and they were like, it's going to, like, poof at you. And, and so I had that, that's all I remember. And I had to go, like, like, and it was like, drop? yes! So it was as if, like, the wind was his body bad dropping. dust in her face. It blew dust and wind in my face. Oh, so. my God. But, yeah, I had to, like, imagine, like, a and then it looked so great because I thought, oh gosh, how is this going to turn out? It looked really good. I've watched it in slow mo a few times. You did? <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> By the way, there was a version of that in the cut, which we did not put into the cut, where we actually got to see Thad get squashed by that beam. <laughs> it's too much. Too much. <laughs> Do not need to see that. That's when TV Land said no. Yeah. <laughs> On those occasions. Yeah, but they, there was. Yeah. We, we understood. We got it. Yeah. Yeah. Less is more sometimes. Yeah. Um, so we're wrapping up, and my last question uh, for Darren is, so what do we know about season six? Is it confirmed yet? It's not confirmed, but hopefully we will get a confirmation. Every, well, you know what? First of all, everybody watch first episode of season one, so we get some good ratings, and they'll say, come back for season six. You mean, se- you mean season, f- season one or season five? I mean, season five. five. Season five. Watch do, first they, do they count ratings right. on cable? Rephrase, watch the first episode, tell everybody about the first epi- episode of season five, which airs on June 5th. 5th. And uh, hopefully we'll get some news right around then. So Fingers make sure everybody crossed. watches it. Uh, well, that's all we have time for, everybody. Uh, thank you so much to the cast of Younger. Uh, thank you so much to you guys. And thank you guys so much for doing this. It was really fun. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.